Hi, it's Chris with Superfly, and today we're talking about kiting technique. Specifically, we're talking about the A's and C's method, the pluses and the minuses. Let's do it. Good morning, it's Chris here at the south side of the point of the mountain and we're here to talk about A's and C's kiting technique. We're using the Gin Evora and I'm also wearing the Gin Go 4. In the big bad world of paragliding, this is a preferred technique. Uh, friends like it because when you're pulling the C's, you can keep the glider down easily. If the glider comes up too fast that you can check it with the rear riser. So uh, we like this technique and we teach it for sure but it has some advantages and some disadvantages, and that's what we're talking about today. The number one thing to know about A's and C's is that you have to be respectful of your glider and the designer of the glider who engineered this thing to one centimeter tolerances. So if you grab the A's and C's and then you use your hands exactly where you, wherever you want them, then you're taking some big artistic license with the design of the glider, and you could end up with a very fast glider that might come above head really racy, or you could end up with a glider that's very slow and needs a lot of A. So you just have to be aware of the hands and my favorite technique is to pull both the risers all the way out. That way, when I start to give action on the glider, when I step back, it's all done with full respect for the designer and the one centimeter tolerances of the glider and the behavior that I get in the glider should be perfect in the way that it was designed. Uh, I'll do my best to steer and manage the glider with the A's and C's and then we'll try uh, using some alternative techniques and see how that goes too. Here we go. All right, so up she came, that worked pretty good. I was able to work it kind of nicely. Didn't deform the glider too much. And now I'm using the C's here to steer and in this perfect breeze, seems to be working quite nicely. I guess the, the test is to get it out of equilibrium and then see how easily I can bring it back. So glider's over here. If I move my hand over there, the C hand and then walk over, pretty good chance it's gonna come back above head. That's nice. Um, Advocates of the A's and C's would tell you that this is nice because if I need to set it down, I can do that. Now it's out of equilibrium. I put my hand over here. It's coming back, but slow. And this is why, see how I'm doing everything right? This is why friends would say that you sometimes need to switch out of A's and C's and just use the brakes because when the glider goes out of equilibrium and you really need to make a correction, and you're using the brakes, it'll happen on a timeline. It'll happen quick. Okay, so while we're kiting a bit, uh, we'll just go for our, our very favorite top tips on kiting in general. Number one is shoes. Um, you have to have shoes that will slide a little bit. You have to have shoes that don't have too aggressive of a grip. That's how we roll around here. We used to dance around the subject, and now we figure out we get much better results with the shoe that has a soft sole and that will slide in time of need. Next one is Eyes Horizon. You'll see the trend, glider trending left, for example, in this case, much sooner if the eyes are on the horizon. Furthermore, you also stay much, much more body aware, aware of your posture, aware of your hands, aware of the developing turns. You can basically keep your hands honest, keep them from doing any random stuff. We also like last knuckle theory, we call it, and that's where you have the brake toggle in your hand and you're flying it with the very last knuckle. That way you get to use all of the joints in your fingers and your hands to give subtle inputs. It keeps you from having to give what we call big caveman inputs with your, with your caveman arm, right? This is the opposite of that. So we like light fingertip inputs nice and early. Another one is called look through the V. You see how there's a V right here? We call this the heads up display. And the first thing we do when the glider goes out of equilibrium is we put the head over there in front of the V and dance over there. Another one would be footwork. So when the glider goes off to the side, there's a couple ways that you could move under it. One would look like this, and that's a very sort of hesitant. And then the other would be willing, eager, um, what we call sneaky ninja. So the footwork that we like the best is sneaky ninja footwork. You see how there's not a sound coming from my feet? A lot of the steps are crossover steps. The head stays in the middle, always moving under it. Now let's go talk A's and C's. Okay, so here we are again on the 
side of the hill, we've got the A's and C's. And by all accounts, this is really nice because if the glider wants to pop up, if I have any sticks or tangles, then I can shut it down easy if things weren't going my way. I've got a lot of power with this hand. It's worth knowing that this is a delicate hand, uh, thumb up, and then this is a powerful hand. So this one will keep it down better, but this one makes it so that you sometimes overdo it on the C's. So I like to hang out like this. When it's time to go, I switch to this so I can be delicate and precise with the hand. All right, we'll go ahead and bring it up. We'll do our best to steer it with the C's. What we tell our students is that no doubt that they should be on the side of the hill wherever they go uh, with the A's and C's, especially to make everyone comfortable that they're using the preferred technique. But when push comes to shove, the glider will come up on its own when they need to steer it's oftentimes going to be better done with the brakes. So I'm going to bring it up with the A's and C's, but I'm not really going to do much with them. I'm going to switch to the brakes. Everybody should be happy with that one. Here we go. Hands all the way out. Going to start the inflation by stepping back. A little C pull, but mostly onto the brakes. Sweet. By the time you turn and face forward, and then also regarding the turn, one of the things that we spend a lot of time teaching friends is just to be short, right? Up here is where I'd normally be. This is me 5'9". For, for kiting purposes and paragliding purposes, I need to be low, a couple feet shorter. So during the turn, a good policy is to always sink. When you do turn, it's always a good idea to try to keep your eyes on the horizon. So if friends are doing a turn where they're looking at the glider, we usually bust them on that. And we try to make sure that they are good at turning with the eyes horizon. Notice the chest forward immediately without delay. Even though I don't really want to go right now, I'm just always, always pushing forward because the glider's always, always kind of pushing back. So you just can't get enough forward. Forward's your buddy. Whatever problem might be happening, glider behind or glider deflated, projecting forward fixes everything. I like to put the my uh, what I call elbow pit, if that's a word, right on the carabiner. So for me, that's how I know I'm doing it right. And I love hands in here. This is way more precise than this. If you ever give this a try, you can only be so precise with big straight arms out back. Maybe you can if you get the fingertips working, but most people don't. I don't mind this for a second, but by the time it's time to fly away, you wanna be precise. Oh my gosh, you can be so much more precise in here. All right, I'm Chris Santa Croce. We're Superfly in Bluffdale, Utah. You can check us out on all the socials and then also on our YouTube channel, Superfly Paragliding School. Come out here to the point of the mountain. Join us, super fun. We do this every single morning. We gotta go help the students. It's gonna be great.